Hey, you beautiful humans. It's Alice, and I'm just going to cut straight to the chase on this one. Right now in America, the most extensive and aggressive attack of my lifetime is being waged against the trans community. Over the past decade, I've watched as right-wing politicians, trans-exclusionary radical feminists, and Christian organizations banded together in attempt after attempt to legislate us out of existence with no regard for how much danger they would be putting trans kids and adults alike in. Because of the subject matter of this video, the algorithm is going to throw its full weight against it. It's incredibly important that as many voices get boosted in the face of this crisis, so be sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts. Thank you. In 2015, the religious right manufactured absolute panic when they claimed men were dressing up as women in order to invade women's bathrooms to attack them. To anyone with a rational mind, this would sound outrageous and downright offensive, but millions of Americans went up in arms against the trans community, seeing us as predators and a literal threat to their safety. And with the firm hold the conservative and Christian media has over said Americans, they were whipped up into a propaganda campaign that claims we were bringing about the destruction of family and society. Again, this should sound ludicrous, but fear-mongering is incredibly effective and conservatives know they can weaponize it to enforce strict gender norms, restrict the bodily autonomy of women and those who give birth, attack any expression outside the confines of cis-heteronormativity, and teach their children that being queer is a literal crime against humanity. You will notice these things sound suspiciously close to fascism. Hmm. Wonder why. Far-right religious organizations such as the Family Research Council, the Alliance Defending Freedom, and the Heritage Foundation, which are hate groups, let's not forget, have gone to bat for the religious right and all of their allies by launching one misinformation campaign after another in the hopes of turning millions of Americans against the trans community and into supporting their effort to force conversion therapy and horrifically oppressive legislation into law because, in their words, it's to build God's vision of America, when in reality it is a blatant violation of the separation of church and state and a gross overreach by a segment of the country that could not give a shit about whether or not it leads to a spike in suicides among trans youth and adults and directly puts us at higher risk for physical and sexual assault, murder, unemployment, homelessness, severe mental health problems, you name it. They are putting that target on our back on purpose. It's about exerting as much power as possible in order to subvert human rights and brainwash millions into believing that what they're doing is ordained by God and the only way to protect American values. It's Christian nationalism intertwined with white supremacy and fascism, but prey on the minds of religious folk who are already susceptible to propaganda and threats of God's wrath for not being a good Christian, and you've got a recipe for immediate unyielding obedience. And look how many people are now screaming about the trans agenda, woo, and how doctors and pro-trans organizations are forcing kids to become trans, forcing minors to have surgery, putting dangerous medications into their bodies without warning them of the side effects, saying men can use women's bathrooms if they say they're a woman, and having the gall to accuse trans health providers of mutilation when these are the same people who demand that newborn intersex babies be operated on to correct any abnormalities. Just admit you hate us and get the fuck over yourselves, please. But we're witnessing the effectiveness of this propaganda and the religious right is not about to let off the gas. According to writer Bryn Tannehill, in 2018, a powerful political movement known as Project Blitz was kicked off to eliminate the separation of church and state and develop a playbook to pass state laws treating transness as a communicable public health hazard to be eradicated by the government like measles, going as far to demand the government maintain everyone's birth gender and do everything in their power to prevent trans people from ever being able to exist as themselves. This same movement would criminalize intimate relationships between non-heterosexual people, ban adoption for same-sex families, 
ban abortion, ban marriage equality, ban even the most remote mention of queer people in any corner of society and erase us from existence, in case you were wondering how far they want to take this. Then in 2020, not satisfied with their already barbaric attacks on us, religious organizations banded together under the banner Promise to America's Children and claims to be looking out for the safety and well-being of children. But if you glance over what exactly their aims are, it's clear they are gaslighting already frightened parents by outright lying about the intentions of things like the Equality Act. On their website, they say this act will penalize Americans, including parents, who disagree with the new ideologies. This will endanger children's health, privacy, and safety, and relationships with those who have the primary responsibility to love, provide for, educate, and raise them. That sounds like a threat, doesn't it? They want to scare the hell out of you because fear is control, and fear of what you don't understand can easily be turned against you. You'll notice, too, how often they use the word ideology, gender ideology, trans ideology, to criticize whatever it is they think would make white Jesus angry. They assert themselves as being morally pure and honest, but treat things like scientific fact as if it's some false doctrine that's being used to manipulate the masses. They believe they are infallible and not to be questioned, much like the God of the Christian Bible, and wield that same kind of abusive hold over those that they were hired to serve. It's almost like electoralism is kind of useless. We know how sexually repressive evangelical Christians are due to its strict hierarchy of gender roles and who's above whom, and claims that trans people will destroy the family and stop the species from propagating. You'll notice they're really obsessed with making babies. Wonder if it's all that sexual repression doing it. Hmm. One of their biggest goals is to strip people of their bodily autonomy and any expression that doesn't fit within the suffocating confines of cis-heteronormativity. And they have no shame about scaring parents into complicity. The thing that arguably gets under my skin the most is every time over the past few years that the religious right sees queerness as being inherently inappropriate and sexual. On the Promise to America's Children website, aka Promise to White Children because Christian nationalists and fascists need white babies so their Gilead-like society can become a reality, they accuse activists of infusing public school curriculum with graphic information about sex, abortion, and politicized ideas about sexual orientation and gender identity ideology. Now, hold on. Pornography and queer people are not always synonymous. Some humans are straight and others are queer. It's merely a part of the human condition. But they see this difference as something that must be eradicated. Which, wouldn't that be going against nature? And isn't that what they accuse us of doing? God, so much projection! And all of this just continued to build and build like something bubbling right underneath the surface like Yellowstone. Until we reached this year, 2021, and the floodgates of some of the most horrifying legislation I have ever seen were blown wide open and conservatives all but declared war on our existence. According to the ACLU, more anti-trans bills have already been introduced in 2021 than in any other year in history. And if you you take a look at this map, as of April 17th, 33 out of the 50 states in the U.S. have either passed or are in the process of trying to pass legislation that directly affects people like myself. The majority of states right now in the U.S. have, in the span of a few months, decided to declare war on us. This is un- Precedented, and yet things are moving so quickly that this map could soon look different. A significant chunk of these bills are hinged upon the debate of biological sex that the religious right has been using for years to claim that sex and gender are synonymous, which they are not, that the gender you're assigned at birth is your identity, which it's not, and that your birth gender is permanent and something that must be adhered to regardless of the mental torture it puts someone through. All of this flies in the face of scientific fact and nearly every major medical, pediatric, and psychological association has spoken out against politicians who are trying to enshrine this into law. 
But in order for fascism or a theocracy to take root, the public must be taught to distrust academia, science, and any voices that don't belong to those in power. They become the primary source of knowledge in history and are given free reign to change the narrative however they see fit. So they accuse trans activists of manipulating children into transitioning, accuse scientists of waging war on traditional values and religious freedom, aka the freedom to discriminate, and delegitimizing trans people's lived experiences by treating them as if they're mentally ill, suffering from abuse, or mentally sick. And the debate over trans athletes has caused the most explosive reactions from lawmakers and citizens alike. As expected, conservative and evangelical media erupted in a firestorm of transphobia, with reports claiming that trans women and cis women cannot be allowed to compete together because biological males are naturally stronger, and thus it's not fair for the biological female to have to fight them. Despite all of the studies showing that over time, hormone replacement therapy changes your body chemistry to where it perfectly resembles the gender aligned with your identity. We biohacked ourselves. That's kind of fucking cool. And yet they couldn't help themselves in taking it a hundred steps further by saying boys would be invading girls' locker rooms, which is directly related to men invading women's restrooms, claiming that women's sports will die if trans women are allowed to compete, and nailing in their belief that biological males can never and should never be women. Well, trans women are women and you will never possess enough hate to make that fact go away. My existence is not a debate. How inconvenient for you. Regardless, they've been hellbent this year on passing bills across the country to ban trans athletes from being able to compete in 19 states. That's right, in 19 states, if not more at this point, trans youth are being told they will never be able to follow their dream of being an athlete for no other reason than who they are. They want trans people to feel unwelcome in certain spaces, to feel unwelcome in society, and to believe they are damned to this kind of life if they choose to embrace themselves. And if that fails, they send them right to conversion therapy, which, again, is torture. It is inherently cruel and designed to inflict as much damage as possible on an already vulnerable community because they see it as an easy opportunity for power. Imagine saying in one breath that you're pro-life and then in another supporting legislation like this. The cognitive dissonance would be astronomical. But the cruelty is the point, and these lawmakers have shown themselves over the past few weeks to be far more cruel than I think any of us really ever could have imagined. There are over 22 states right now, nearly half the country, attempting to pass legislation that will make it a felony to give trans youth or trans adults gender-affirming health care and even strip health insurance from adults simply for being trans, which means that tens of thousands of people will suddenly lose all access to the one lifeline that was holding them back from a severe mental health crisis or suicide. Lest we forget the medical professionals have agreed it's incredibly dangerous to suddenly stop taking hormone therapy because of the risk of blood clots and other medical situations. They don't care! Puberty blockers will be outlawed even though they've been shown time and again to be completely safe with little to no side effects besides a delayed puberty and have been prescribed to cis people for decades now without any fuss. But we know why that is. The religious right claims that kids younger than 18 either cannot or should not be allowed to understand the nature of their identity because it's not appropriate, they can't consent to it, what if they regret it, they're young and will grow out of it, and so on. Every little thing they can say to discredit the lived experiences of kids who know and understand themselves better than anyone else but require that knowledge about transness in order to put the puzzle pieces together and realize who they are. If that knowledge is kept from them, they're left helpless and unable to avoid their first puberty, one they didn't want to experience, and one that will leave their body permanently changed against their wishes. I can speak from experience about how much this hurts, knowing that growing up in conservative East Texas and a conservative religious family prevented me from coming out at a much earlier age. Even in preschool, I knew something was different about me, and as I got older, had I been educated little by little about gender identity, I would have known for a 
fact that I was trans and could have had more time to change the course that I was on. Kids understand themselves. By infantilizing them and robbing them of agency, you are ripping away their chance to have a healthy childhood and healthy relationship with themselves, their friends, and family. If they're made to feel shame about their body, what exactly makes you think they'll just magically grow out of it and suddenly love who they are with all of the trauma that you inflicted? Excuse me. And it's unsurprising that those pushing this legislation onto us without our consent neglected to mention that hormone replacement therapy consists of pretty much the exact same drugs used in birth control. If hormones for trans people are suddenly taken away, they won't even pause before yanking birth control and abortion rights away from those who can give birth. Their dream to overturn Roe v. Wade and shut down Planned Parenthood would be within reach, and we have been yelling for years that this is the end game of what the religious right is trying to do, but no one listens. Ignorance has consequences. And right now, Florida stands poised to inflict some of the most horrific trauma on high school students by passing a bill that not only bans trans kids from being able to play sports, but will allow genital inspections of any student they think might be trans. Listen to me. This is legalized sexual assault of minors that will target cis students who don't look feminine enough or don't fit a certain stereotype of a girl. Not only is this a complete violation of their consent and bodies, but is just inviting pedophilic behavior right into the spaces where minors will be. These politicians will scream until their throat is raw about trans people being pedophiles who are invading women's spaces, but are somehow perfectly fine with actual pedophiles being allowed to perform genital exams? How the fuck is this being allowed? And yet, even this one isn't enough for them because there are other bills like in Texas, SB 1646, that would take children away from their parents if the parents supported their child's gender identity. The state is literally reaching into your home and telling you how to raise your children and threatening you with arrest if you don't comply. Yeah, party a small government, my ass. Other bills would force teachers to tell their parents if their children are showing signs of gender nonconformity, which means girls who are more butch could be reported to their parents as being queer, even if they aren't, and now have to deal with scrutiny from an untrusting family. But it's trans kids getting the shortest end of the stick, because now they'll have to make themselves completely invisible in order to avoid harassment and abuse from the state. And that harassment and abuse will follow them into adulthood so they'll be stopped from transitioning at every single opportunity. So do you get it? Do you understand what's happening? We are being attacked from every single side right now, and instead of seeing collective outrage erupt across the country, I am seeing near radio silence from the cis community, the only allies we have who could turn the tide by helping us fight back. For the first time, I am genuinely scared for our community, and it feels like we're being left alone to be crushed by a force that we do not have the ability to effectively resist. We are witnessing eugenics in action. And yet, have y'all noticed that trans people are never consulted for legislation that affects them, never contacted for interviews so we can speak candidly, never consulted when reports are being written, never asked how we feel about any of this? The entire narrative of the anti-trans agenda has been fabricated to manufacture consents and fuel their mission to erase us from society. They need to keep us silent in order for their efforts to be successful, which means the algorithm more than likely is going to absolutely destroy this video. Normally, I don't employ people to share a video of mine, but because of the gravity of what my community is currently facing, the only thing that stands a chance of giving us the footing to push back is if there is a concerted effort among cis allies to boost our voices and help others understand how serious this is and the implications that it will have for them. First, they came for us, and next, they will come for you. Things are going to get worse, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar, Louis Gohmert, and other GOP members of Congress have announced the America First Caucus that promotes Anglo-Saxon political traditions. We now have an openly white supremacist political caucus in America. 
Y'all have seen well-known figures on the right openly do Nazi salutes, and I know we haven't forgotten about the stage at CPAC literally being a Nazi symbol. These are the same people that the religious right is intermingled with. They share the same vision for our society, and until we acknowledge the connection between Christian nationalism and white supremacy, we will not be able to effectively fight either. This is a terrifying time to be alive as a trans person in America, and to help some of y'all understand how much this affects us, I want you to imagine that you have a child who begins to question their identity. Say your kid comes to you one day and says they're being bullied at school for being too boyish or girly. They tell you they're terrified for their safety and feel like there's no one to talk to because everyone already raises their hackles at the very mention of trans people. Or they're beginning to sense the disconnect from who they're being told to be and who they're beginning to realize they are. And you see in their eyes how much hurt they're carrying because society has made them feel guilty for just wanting to be themselves. You see the life drain from them when their one lifeline, the one thing pushing them to wake up each and every day is taken away and they cry and panic because they're being forced to live the kind of life and be the kind of person they would rather die than be. Every moment you choose not to listen to, support, or affirm them that it is good and beautiful to explore and understand themselves is another moment they will fall deeper and deeper into that spiral, one they may never be able to free themselves from. Children Children do not exist to be turned into pawns for any oppressive regime. They should be able to just be kids and express themselves in whatever way brings them happiness and light. Giving them that freedom and assurance that you will be there to look out for them and allow them to choose for themselves who they want to be means they will grow up with a healthier sense of and relationship with themselves and, surprise, surprise, won't grow out of it because you don't grow out of your identity. You are who you are and that is an intrinsic, unchangeable part of you as a person. Anyone who has the audacity to say that you're not allowed to be exactly who you are can fuck right off. Pushing kids into mental health crises or suicide so you can genocide their community out of existence or threatening them with genital exams and having their parents taken away is the closest thing I can think of to true evil. Thinking about all of this and then writing this has honestly been mentally and emotionally draining for me and I know so many of you in the community are feeling exhausted because the hits just don't stop coming. But family looks out for family and I am here for y'all just like y'all have been here for me and I am going to try to do my part to help spread awareness and educate people over the impact that these things are having on us. It's not right that we have to yell so much louder just to be noticed while cis people control the narrative 24-7 and now we're expected to sit back and watch as the powerful bulldoze what little we had. Uh, not on my watch. When you attack one of us, you attack all of us and we are not about to stand for it and back down. Cis people, we really need you right now. Please listen to us and believe when we say this legislation will not stop with us. We are warning you because you're in danger too and it's only through all of us fighting this together that we will have a chance of stopping things before they get much, much worse. But it needs to be soon. Just educating friends or neighbors on what's happening, sharing videos and retweeting critical information, affirming and listening to your trans friends and colleagues, and pushing back in whatever way you're able can make all the difference. Electoralism is useless and right now we need to be forming a united front because we are defenseless against the state. These bills will even more adversely affect black and indigenous people of color who are trans and they're already being terrorized day in and day out by the police who are an occupying military force and white supremacist organization, not to mention oppression from all sides. This is a monumental challenge and right now I have no idea where things will go from here but even in the most uncertain times I try to keep my wits about me and find little bits of happiness wherever I can and I really hope that y'all are able to do the same as well. We are in this together. Please don't ever forget that. Y'all are the reason I'm alive today and I would give my life for this family. There is nothing in this world that can take away who we are. So please do not give up, okay? 
as long as we give this everything we've got, I think there will be an opportunity for things to get better. So without further ado, let's get to work, shall we? Pray on them. That's a fire truck. Hello. Hello. You've, you've guessed it on my show. Please go the fuck away. Thank you.